Member for Coomera. Oh, Mr Acting Deputy Speaker, I rise to uh, respond to the budget handed down on Tuesday by the, uh, by the Treasurer. Um, and what can I say? I feel like, I feel like it's I feel like it's a broken record because I talked about these issues last year and the year before and the year before and indeed using exit 38 as the example using exit 38 as the example the business case has been on the minister's desk since 2018 and there is not one dollar in this budget for exit 38. Now, is it becoming a, uh, a, a little bit of a, a time issue? I can assure you it is, because recently, indeed it was last December, we were advised that by 2026 the harness racing facility will be opening eight kilometres down the road from exit 38 at Norwell in 2026, which is three years away. No funding for exit 38. It's a $110 billion, I'm told, project. There needs to be some work done with the federal government about that particular project for no other reason other than it is already a high priority project. And now we've got the harness racing facility opening in 2026 for um, four meetings a week for that. We've got the Visi uh, pro uh, project opening in 2026-27, $500 million, more industrial, um, industrial uh, um, uptake in the area, and it's already a heavily congested exit. So there's a classic example. We put a, a petition in, and the minister came back and said, oh, well, there's some planning got to be done. Uh, and we'll get around to asking the uh, federal government for some money on that. Now, what's the difference between the current federal government and the previous federal government? Well, I'll tell you. The previous federal government, the state would get a commitment from the previous federal government through Bert Van Manen, the local federal member, for 50 per cent of the funding Listen up, you'll learn something. For 50 per cent of the funding, before, before they had to spend the uh, resources, the time resources and what have you, to do the planning for exits. Now let me use a couple of examples. Exit 41. Exit 41, it's nowhere near, nowhere near finished. It's nowhere near efficient. It has a lot more work to be done to it. Indeed, one of the slip lanes, or this, the only slip lane that we've got, still isn't open for no apparent reason off exit 41. But that funding and that exit upgrade came into effect because the federal member for Ford got the 50 per cent funding before these guys even thought about it. And it took them, it took them about five minutes to come in and say, yep, they're going to throw in the other 50 per cent of funding. And then we went through the planning process. And there it is. Exit 49, same thing. 50 per cent of the funding from the federal government before we had to worry about going and trying to do planning with, with, with this, that and the other thing. The funding was there. Five minutes later, they came in and said, yep, we'll tip the other 50 per cent of the funding in. Now, they got stuck in the slow lane on that one, which is fairly typical for this bloke. Uh, they got stuck in the slow lane and it's only just started. The funding was made available in 2019 and they've only just in the last several months started construction on exit 49. So now we get letters from the minister telling us that we're going to do it in reverse now. We're not going to do it that way. What we're going to do for example, at exit 45, is we're going to do some planning with one and a half million dollars, and then, but we're not going to do that now. Now that it's in a hell of a mess, now that it's that it's an absolute quagmire because of the band-aid solution that they put in place, that correctly 
res resolve the issue of safety for ramping on the M1. That fixed that. But the problem is now we've got worse congestion at exit 45 now than before. We ran a petition on it. The minister's written back to us and said, we're going to do some planning, but we're not doing the planning now with that one and a half million. We're doing the planning in 2027. It's already heavily congested and we're not going to do the planning until 2027. Then, after we've done the planning, we're going to go off to the federal government and ask them for the money. And fingers crossed, they're going to give us some money. But remember, they've cut a few projects lately, so what's the chances of us getting the money out of the federal government? We're going to be lucky to see the upgrade at exit 45 before 2030. In fact, we're going to be lucky to see the upgrade at exit 45 under this mob before the Olympic Games. So there's two examples. OK, we will. We'll fund it. In our government, after the next election, Order. we will fund Order. it. We'll put the money up. Order. We'll go off to the Feds. We'll go off to the Feds and ask Pause them the to the half of the money. Pause the clock. That's what we'll do. Member for Mirabara, you're not in your chair. It will stop, or else I'll warn you. So it must stop. The member for Coomera, you've got the floor. Thank you. We will fund it after October next year. We'll get, we'll do the job that you mob should have been doing years ago on exit 38 and exit 45. Through the, the chair, commercial industrial order. Areas, the commercial industrial areas in the northern Gold Coast, in the Yatla Precinct. Member for Coomera, through the chair. What? Sorry. Beg your pardon? Oh, oh, hang on, pause the clock. A member of Coomera, through the chair. You're directing it at the Treasurer. I'm watching you, just through the chair. I didn't say you. Order. I'll start warning people. It's getting out of control. Member of Coomera, you've got the floor. Eight minutes. The industrial area on the northern Gold Coast, centred on Yatla, is log jammed, log jammed every day. Not just five days a week, not just through the week, seven days a week. And this mob think it's funny. They think it's an absolute hilarious joke. Member for Pine the Rivers. The northern Gold Coast is yet again left in the slow lane, stuck in the slow lane because of the lack of funding from this government. Remember I said that, fund, that, that business case has been there since 2018 and there's not one dollar, not one dollar, and yet we're staring down the throat of the harness raising facility that's being moved from Brisbane for the Olympic Games Order. going out to Norwell. So they're just two small examples which are huge for the northern Gold Coast. Exit 45 and exit 38. They don't care, they don't understand, they don't, don't realise the impact every day on the people of the northern Gold Coast. You know the saddest part of this, this last budget? It's the same as the saddest part of the budget before. No new money. No new money for any projects. The headlines that we saw on the Gold Coast Bulletin one of them was for $2.1 billion for health. No, it's not new money. That's $2.1 billion that was announced last year. What about the $1.3 billion for transport? No, that was announced last year. It's just been re-announced. And they get the headline. That's what they're all about. That's what these lot are all about. They're all about getting the headline. They're all about saying, look at us, look at us, look at us, but they don't deliver. They're years behind on Cross River Rail. They've got trains coming. They've got trains coming for Cross River Rail two years later than Cross River Rail. They can't even deliver the rolling stock on time for Cross River Rail. How long have they known about Cross River Rail and when it's going to be completed? Member for Merriborough. Years. Years. They've known about it, and they've only finally got around to saying, "Yep, right, are we going to let some contracts, and we're going to build the trains?" Oh, but it's going to be two years later that we're actually going to deliver 
the trains.